because it does make you do things like that. Mm-hmm. You know, how many women? If he if he got one woman a, a day to go up there, the odds are in his favor. Three of them are going to suck his dick. Yeah. Oh, I'm Just sure it was a weekly and thing. And one week, four of them are going to suck his dick. But it's going to go from three to four women a week if he brings one up there every afternoon. What if he brings one up there every night? Yeah. Goes to a party. You know, the Annabella score. You know, I mean, when it comes to Hollywood, all bets are off. Because this this could have never happened anywhere else, right? mm-hmm. except here, where you go back to a party and he re rapes you. Mm-hmm. It was just too much. Yeah, it was just too much. But this could only happen here. Yeah, this could only happen in this type of like agent sent you to meet with him. Yeah, I this really big producer, a separate guy, set me up at a meeting with this really big production company who made every like awesome comedy that I grew up on. And I had a meeting with the development executive and I walked in there and he goes, are those your real tits? And I was like, yeah. And I thought this was a professional meeting. And this was in his office with people like walking around on the other side of the glass. And he goes, stand up, do a little spin. I want to see your body. I was so fucking shocked that that happened. That felt like, you know, like I've had like millions of things like that happen in my first year here. And then it like broke me and something snapped and I was like, never again. And I'm, I'm a little grateful in a way because it kicked me into high gear and I've never worked fucking harder after that, you know? And I was like, I'm doing the dumb girl thing where I think if I have a meeting with someone and something gets handed to me because I'm cute, like, it's like, no, do the fucking work. Like, it's not like I wasn't doing the work, but it was like a mindset switch. You know, it's it's fucking crazy. Yeah, it's like, a, you know, girls being like always handed free drinks and you're just like one of those dumb girls, you know, fast life. And then like reality sets in and it's like, OK, I can't live like this anymore and like be a part of that, like mentality and scene of people who operate like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's not just girls. Like if Harvey Weinstein was gay and I invited straight guys up there. Yeah. There'd be hundreds of straight guys. No, like it's the just the because you think your dream's coming true, so you're willing to. Yeah, it it feels like you know. I know I'm from New York. I'm smart, but like I could be, you know, I I was so dumb, you know. It it felt like I was right out of fucking Wizard of Oz. Like what? Huh? Like I don't. It's weird. It's almost like I don't know if it's like denial or like just hopeful that something else. This isn't it. I, it it's crazy. The mystique of, I didn't see the mystique of Hollywood until I saw Never Never Land. That's when I got it. That's Finding the, Neverland? Yeah, whatever. The, the Michael, Michael Jackson, Jackson thing? Yeah. Because, you know, you take two people from Simi Valley, wherever the parents were from, hardworking Americans, you know, and then Michael Jackson steps into your life. And mm-hmm. Next thing you know, do you want to go on tour? Well, you know, I could see me saying, hey, do you want to go to Tempe? That's one thing. <laughs> you want to go to fucking Australia and bring your husband and bring everybody on the fucking floor you want and then, you know, to see how they got caught up. Now, who would think Michael Jackson would molest my kid? Yeah. Well, do you mind if he sleeps in the room? I mean, other kids are going to be in there too. And your kid's coming up to you going, please, please, daddy, please, daddy. And you're like... I guess so. You know, I mean, it, you get caught up. People got mad at the parents, and I got a little upset when I watched. I it. did too. But you have to really think about what goes on here, how it goes into your psyche. The bottom line is, if you move here and you're not prepared for this, they'll eat you up and spit you out. Mm-hmm. It's a horrible, horrible, horrible business. And as a woman, you got to be on top of your fucking game every day. And you got to do like Clemenza told whatever. That you got to stop guys like they should have stopped Hitler at Munich. <laughs> First move. Yeah. First disrespect. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Before we even go any further, you say something like that again, I'll smack you in the fucking yeah. jersey style. <clears throat> and the whole thing changes because this is not a town. This is not a town over people except responsibility. 
Now you become difficult to work with. Totally. Which like That's the term. Oh, you're difficult to work with. Why? Cuz I wouldn't suck your dick. Because I wouldn't let you say to me, nice ass. Because mm-hmm. I wouldn't let you say, come here, let me spank any ass real quick. Nobody's watching. If you speak up for yourself in this mm-hmm. town, for people who don't know, you become a term that's called difficult to work with. Yeah. That means the director could say to you, you look stupid in that blouse. And you have to accept it. Where you being from Jersey would go, Tell your mother to suck my dick. And he go, oh, yeah. you know, and then, you know, but now you're difficult to work with. And, and when you go to your agent and your agent goes, what happened? And you go, he told me I had nice tits. I told him to suck my dick. <laughs> well, you you, sh- you can't tell, mm-hmm. you know, uh, <laughs> Jocko Giacomazzi to suck your dick. Well, I just did. I just did. And three or four people are going to go, shame on you, uh, Shame on you, whatever your fucking name is, uh, Chelsea, for for, tell, for telling Jocko Giacomasi to suck your dick. But there's going to be one guy that's going to go, fucking good for you. Now I'm going to put you in all my fucking movies. Yeah. Because that guy's is a fucking punk. Thank God you told that motherfucker. And that's a problem that we don't have. Yeah. That when we come here with green, we want to do good. Mm-hmm. You know, your parents are breaking your balls. What's going on out there? <laughs> I just sent you another 800 for the rent. Yeah. Well, I met with George Clooney last night. We did an orgy with Lucy Lou. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's going to put me in his next army movie. Fuck, you know, you got uh, that pressure, kind of. So, it. Uh, listen, and I tell people all the time, when I did the longest yard, I drank the Kool-Aid. Hmm. I drank the Kool-Aid. There was a couple of months that I drank the Kool-Aid. In and what way? I don't know. I, I, I didn't... I, I believe that more things would have happened in mm. my career. I thought that I had moved up a notch. I really drank the Kool-Aid, and, I, and then it was tough to accept. And what pissed me off was where I was from. Guys like me don't drink the Kool-Aid. Mm. we see it for what the fuck it is. And ever since then, I never drank the Kool-Aid again. I remembered that before this whole thing of comedy and acting yeah. and movies and this whole life, that I'm a man, I'm a husband and a father. And you have to respect me from that perspective, that acting stand-up shit. You talk to me the wrong way, you're going out a fucking window. Yeah. Because it just doesn't. And I did it. Like, I went out of director one time, and it was tremendous. And now I just go at them if I don't agree. And I'm not saying I'm hard to work with. What I'm saying is I don't take shit. We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.